The best way to apply progressive overload according to current science. When talking about progressing in the gym, the first thing that comes to mind for most people is increasing the weight on the bar week after week. Seems simple, right? Train heavier and get bigger. Unfortunately, this simplistic thinking has led many athletes to frustrating plateaus and even unnecessary injuries. The truth is that there is a much smarter way to apply progressive overload, which allows you to continue growing without needing to destroy your body by infinitely increasing weights. And the most interesting part, you can continue progressing even when you can't lift more weight. That's why in this video, you will see exactly how to apply the famous principle of progressive overload based on scientific studies, current research, and practical logic. What is progressive overload exactly? In its essence, this principle states that to continue adapting, whether gaining strength, endurance, or muscle mass, you need to progressively increase the stress imposed on your muscles. Many think this means only increasing the weight on the bar, but science shows that mechanical stress can be increased in various ways. Current research defines progressive overload as the systematic and progressive increase of one or more training variables to force continuous adaptation. These variables include weight, training volume, density, weekly frequency, movement control, range of motion, and muscle tension. A study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research demonstrated that athletes who varied these different forms of overload had superior results compared to those who only tried to increase the weight lifted. Why does progressive overload continue to work even in more advanced athletes? One of the biggest myths in the training world is that after a few years of lifting weights, you stop progressing. But what science shows us is something completely different. A review work conducted by Schoenfeld and his collaborators in 2023 analyzed athletes with more than five years of consistent training. The study demonstrated that even in this advanced audience, progressive overload continued to generate adaptations, although at a slower pace and with a more sophisticated approach. This happens because our body is an incredibly adaptable machine. When we repeatedly apply a stimulus, it develops mechanisms to deal with this stress more efficiently. That's why we constantly need to vary the stimulus, not just increasing weight, but manipulating all other available variables. The famous researcher Brad Schoenfeld explains that advanced athletes need to be more strategic with overload, alternating phases where they prioritize different variables. For example, periods focused on volume, others on intensity, others on density, and so on. Increasing weight or increasing repetitions, what does science say after all? When we talk about progressive overload, one of the biggest questions is, is it better to increase the weight or increase the repetitions? The answer, as always in training science, is, it depends. A meta-analysis published in Sports Medicine in 2022 compared different forms of progression and found that, for maximum strength gains, the progressive increase of load with fewer repetitions of 1 to 5 proved more efficient. For hypertrophy, both load increase and repetition increase were effective, as long as the training approached muscle failure. Researcher James Krieger demonstrated in his studies that the optimal progression for hypertrophy seems to be a combination. First, increase the number of repetitions at a certain load. For example, from 8 to 12 repetitions, and only then increase the weight, returning to the lower limit of the repetition zone again. This method allows you to increase the total mechanical tension that is defined by weight times repetitions, extend time under tension, improve technique before increasing the load, and obviously reduce the risk of injuries. Here's a practical example. If you're doing squats with 220 pounds for eight repetitions, instead of immediately going up to 231 pounds, First try to reach 10, then 12 repetitions with the same 220 pounds. Only then increase to 231 pounds and go back to 8 repetitions, restarting the cycle. The best approach for strength. When the main goal is maximum strength, research points to specific guidelines. The work of Greg Knuckles and Eric Helms demonstrated that for optimal strength gains, an approach called volume intensity progression has shown the best results. In this model, you start a phase with moderate to high intensity with a load equivalent to 85% of what you would do for a maximum repetition and moderate volume. Then, 
over four to six weeks, gradually increase the volume, either by doing more sets or repetitions. Then, reduce the volume and increase the intensity, this time with a load ranging from 85 to 95% of what you would do for a maximum repetition. Studies conducted at the University of Oklahoma showed that this undulating approach allows adequate recovery between high-intensity sessions and prevents the neurological burnout that often happens when trying to constantly increase the load. The best approach for hypertrophy. When the focus is muscle growth, science points to a different approach than that used for strength gains. Research published by Schoenfeld and colleagues revealed that hypertrophy responds better to a higher volume of training and a variety of repetition ranges, as long as the intensity is adequate. Therefore, to maximize hypertrophy, progressive overload should follow these guidelines. First, prioritize the total training volume. This means the number of sets close to failure per muscle group per week. Second, work in a variety of repetition ranges 8 to 15 repetitions. Third, alternate between periods of volume increase and load increase. A recent study showed that athletes who systematically varied their overload methods obtained 27% greater gains in hypertrophy compared to those who just tried to increase the weight on the bar. An effective model would be Phase 1 four weeks of volume accumulation. Week one, 12 sets per muscle group per week. Week two, 14 sets per muscle group per week. Week three, 16 sets per muscle group per week. Week four, 12 sets per muscle group per week. Phase two, four weeks of intensification. Maintain the volume of 14 weekly sets, progressively increasing the load by 2.5 to 5% per week and slightly reducing repetitions as the load increases. By alternating between these two forms of progression, you continue to stimulate hypertrophic adaptations even when you reach a strength plateau. Increasing sets or frequency, which is more effective. Another crucial question in progressive overload is, when we need to increase the total volume, is it better to add more sets per session or distribute the same number of sets over more days of the week? Research published in the International Journal of Sports Physiology and Performance showed interesting results. For beginners and intermediates, both approaches produced similar results. For advanced, distributing training in higher weekly frequency, training each muscle group two to three times per week produced superior results. Why? Researchers point to two main reasons. First, higher frequency means more opportunities to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Second, the quality of sets tends to be better when you don't accumulate many sets in a single session. In practice, this means that when you reach a level where you're already doing, for example, five sets of bench press per session, instead of adding a sixth set, it might be more beneficial to maintain five sets but train chest three times a week instead of two. A study conducted in Norway with advanced lifters showed that those who trained each muscle group three to four times per week with moderate volume per session had 17% superior results to those who trained with high volume one to two times per week. How to have an intelligent and above all sustainable approach. One of the biggest problems I see in the application of progressive overload is the lack of sustainability. Many athletes try to increase the load week after week, inevitably hitting a wall and frequently getting injured. Current science suggests a much smarter approach, which I call varied cyclic progression. This model has been validated by multiple studies and consists of cycles of linear progression for three to six weeks. During this period, try to progress linearly in a specific variable of your choice, be it weight, repetitions, or sets. At the end of each linear cycle, change the variable that is being progressively overloaded. Then apply a strategic deload. This means a planned period of reduction in volume or intensity to allow complete recovery. Finally, Make an assessment of progress, regularly measuring key indicators to adjust the strategy. A two-year longitudinal study conducted with natural athletes showed that those who followed this type of cyclical approach maintained constant progression, while those who tried continuous linear progression stagnated after four to six months. Periodization for progressive overload. To implement progressive overload truly effectively, we need to talk about periodization the systematic organization of training over time. 
A paper published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research compared three periodization models for intermediate and advanced athletes. Number one, linear periodization. Starts with high volume, low intensity, and progressively reduces volume while increasing intensity. Number two, undulating periodization. Alternates volume and intensity within the same week. Number three, block periodization. Focuses on a specific quality, be it hypertrophy or strength, for blocks of three to six weeks before changing. The results showed that for intermediate athletes, all three models were effective, but for advanced athletes, undulating and block periodization produced superior results. Monitoring and adjustments. A frequently neglected aspect of progressive overload is systematic monitoring. Science clearly shows that athletes who consistently track their training variables progress significantly faster. A study published in the Journal of Sports Sciences followed two groups of intermediate athletes for 16 weeks. The group that used a detailed training recording and adjustment system obtained 31% superior results in strength and 22% in hypertrophy. Factors you should monitor. Weight used in each exercise. Complete repetitions performed. Perception of effort. Recovery time between sets. Technical quality of movement. An effective strategy is to use the concept of reps in reserve to guide your load increases. For example, when you can perform a certain weight with two reps in reserve, it's time to increase the load. How to deal with stagnation. Even with the best implementation of progressive overload, plateaus will eventually happen. It's a normal part of the training process, especially for advanced athletes. When this happens, research suggests some evidence-based strategies. Number one, more prolonged deloads. A recent meta-analysis showed that periods of 7 to 14 days of reduced training can break persistent plateaus by allowing complete recovery of the nervous and muscular systems. Number 2. Exercise Variation A study published by Fonseca and collaborators demonstrated that replacing similar exercises, for example, changing flat bench press to incline bench press for 3 to 4 weeks can renew the stimulus and promote new adaptations. Number 3. Advanced techniques. For experienced athletes, techniques such as vascular occlusion, accentuated eccentric, and functional isometry can provide new stimuli without necessarily increasing the load. Number four, nutritional review. Of course, we're talking about factors within the gym, but the fact is that many plateaus are related to nutritional factors, such as prolonged caloric deficit or insufficient protein intake. An interesting study showed that 68% of plateaus in advanced athletes were resolved not with more volume or intensity, but with strategies that allowed better recovery and stimulus renewal. So far, we've discussed the scientific principles of progressive overload, but how to apply this in practice in your day-to-day -day at the gym. A study from the University of Auckland demonstrated that the response to training can vary up to five times between different individuals subjected to the same protocol. Some practical guidelines for individualizing your progressive overload model. First, seek to identify your level. Strategies will be different for beginners, intermediates, and advanced. Second, recognize your predominant fiber type. People with a predominance of fast twitch fibers tend to respond better to higher loads and moderate volumes, while those with a predominance of slow twitch fibers benefit from higher volumes. Third, evaluate your recovery capacity. Factors such as age, stress levels, sleep quality, and nutrition directly affect how much training stress you can tolerate. Fourth, experiment with different models. The only way to discover what works best for you is to test different approaches for periods of 8 to 12 weeks and compare results. A strategy to determine your ideal progression model is to do what researchers call a volume response test. This involves exposing yourself to different training volumes per week for periods of 4 to 6 weeks and carefully monitoring the results. In general, progressive overload goes far beyond simply adding more weight to the bar week after week. Current science shows us that a multifaceted approach, which considers all training variables and strategically manipulates them over time, is what really produces consistent and lasting results. Varying between volume and intensity progression, using different periodization models, systematically monitoring your performance, and individualizing your approach 
are principles that represent the current state of scientific knowledge on how to maximize your results in strength and hypertrophy training. Remember that the training journey is a marathon, not a 100-meter race. Patience and consistency, guided by an intelligent application of progressive overload, are what will separate those who continue to progress year after year from those who are stuck in an endless cycle of plateaus and frustrations. And if you also want to know what the most recent studies say about how many days we should rest before training the same muscle again, we have a video analyzing each of them appearing right now on your screen. Thank you for watching this far and may God bless you, my friend.